Hey there, viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. We are 2013. It's a Zero Legacy. It's got the big 2.5. It's got a spongy brake pedal. Some of you might remember this vehicle from a previous video. We did the rear wheel bearings on this. I showed you the rear wheel bearing trick, how to remove them on the back of the Subaru. Um, when I got done with it, the steering wheel was shaky and um, you know, the customer requested that we did the rear brakes, which those were pretty smoked on this. There's some issues going on with the front brakes. We got to look at that. But some of you may also realize this vehicle is from another video before that video. And that video was on an intermittent problem. So this lady has issues with this thing, thrown on the money light with the PO500, I believe it was, a speed sensor problem. And then if you check in the ABS history, it has a problem with this left front wheel, losing speed signal, evidently. But every time we drive it, or at least when we drove it then, it was working fine. You know, we drive it down the road, I'll reference that video, I'll pop it up on the screen, we'll leave it in the description or anything so you guys can re-watch that. Where we drove it, we noticed, you know, the bearings are bad and the muffler is loud and the front brakes shake and the pedal spongy. But beyond all of that, we never got the wheel speed sensor to drop out or glitch. So we gave it back to her and she drove it for, for a while and then the light's been on and off and it's been just kind of intermittent. So. Here we are. We're gonna have a look at the front brakes. We're fixing the car up mechanically for her, so you know the, the mechanical brakes are good. And my thought is, both front wheel speed sensors are the same. And every time we check this sucker, it's working. And then you know you can drive and drive and drive and go back and forth to the ice cream store a hundred times and never quits. Give it back to her, and you know a week later it'll eventually come on. So what I'm curious is, is can we swap the front wheel speed sensor side to side? Um, if they come out. If they don't, well, I don't know. We might just take a guess, which sounds ridiculous, and just put a speed sensor in it. They're relatively inexpensive. They're cheaper than an hour of my time, if that makes sense to you. And the only reason I'm considering swapping them is because we're gonna be right there. What's that gonna prove? Well, it may prove that the problem is in or isn't in you know, the speed sensor. I've seen issues on these Subarus where aftermarket wheel bearings have issues with wheel speed sensors and setting off codes. Um, she claims uh, that they haven't done this one. Her husband put a CV axle in it, but that should be you know, irrelevant. So anyhow, all that being said, let's get after it. Let's find out why the, pun the punji pedal, this pedal's spongy, and uh, have a look at the brakes mechanically, see if we're gonna need anything. It may have a bad master cylinder, I don't know. But let's get to our parts, see what's gonna need, and then see if we can swap those speed sensors. Mm-hmm. These ones are looking pretty rusty crusty. I don't know if the pads are seized up or what. I did not drive it before I brought it in. Let's get a 14 mm. Let's peel this off, see if the pins are good and the caliper's any good. At least I think it's 14. Yes, sir. Grab the 14 and the 12 just in case. Yeah, that's going the right way, I think so. Oh, oh, oh. That pin's good. That one feels like it's got a stiff. Slide this little guy off. Pistons are pretty rusty. Ooh, super rusty. <laughs> Knock the rust out of those. We'll stick that up there. This upper bottom pin moves. Upper pin saying not today. Let's have a look at these uh, pads here. Pretty uneven wear is to be expected. So you can see, just for example, take us here for example, like we're down lower there than we are up here. So she's sitting in cattywampus like that. And that's because this pin moves and this pin doesn't. Therefore, you know, the caliper is going to be seized. It's always going to want to kind of cock off. See if this thing's well. Here's a guy who can't use a pair of adjustable pliers. Oh, yeah, see, tiger tight. Pads are a little east in the brackets, not too terrible. Seen worse. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Rotor smoke, pad shot, obviously. The thing that concerns me, though, is the amount of rust in these pistons I've seen. 
where these little suckers will rust right straight through. Hondas are notorious for this. This is a Subaru though. Where you can see the amount of rust coming out of the caliper pistons. Um, if it were me, I'd be putting a caliper on it. I'm running by the customer, so calipers or a caliper pad and rotors. Let's pop the other side apart and have a quick peek. Prior to doing that though, let's see about getting a swivel socket and pulling this bracket off. We can take the bottom bolt out one right here with the 17. Well, we might be able to get the top one. That one wasn't too terribly tight. I don't want a chance. I don't want to strip that off it. Oh, come on, fella. The strut bolt's right in the way. It'd be easier to do that one with a wrench. I want to get this off. Um, let's knock our rotor off and let's have a little look at this speed sensor. What's up, Miss Zoe? Ever it's ten. It's almost eleven o'clock. Take care of your children. Oh, okay. Just letting you know you're late for work. Let me to go back home. Am I no. fired? No. Can I? You're hired. You go with no. Laid off for a little while. Nope. Dang it. Oh, let's see here, folks. Lawnmower man saw that we were making a video. So not to disappoint, he fired up the mower. Guy sure likes mowing lawn. Let's uh, see if we can very gingerly ooh, crack this little guy loose. I don't know if this speed sensor will be willing and, to come out. Probably not. Typically, in the People's Republic of New York, we do not touch speed sensors as a general rule. But we're gonna give this one the old college try here. I may have to move you because I don't think I can get in here. You gotta move, old son. Switch pliers. Oh, would you look at that, I think. I can't get my head back here. Oops. Oh, ha, look at me. Look at me go. So we got the uh, speed sensor out of here on the right side. This is not the suspect bad one. This is our known good. Wait a gal dang minute now. I see where this has been rubbing. Right here. This side's not even a bad side. I don't know if you guys, I can't see the viewfinder, but this one's been rubbing. And that is on the axle side. There's a fair amount of rust buildup on this little fella. Let me look down here in the hole. Looking in the hole. I'm pretty 99% certain the magnet is on the uh, bearing side. So I'm wondering, this one has some rust jacking on it to the point it's actually scuffing it into the CV axle. I'm curious to know if when we take the other one out if that is similar. Maybe it's just a rust jacking issue on that side. Might be double locked up on this side. Oh, okay, this is why he changed the CV axle then, because it must be the boot was torn. See all this old caliper grease? Or not caliper grease, but CV axle grease. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought these things were double locked. Barely move that one. This one, negative. So, looks like our safe bet is to do both front brake calipers. It's gonna do pads and motors because they do shake like crazy. But this caliper also has a tremendous amount of rust in on the back of the piston. Huge flakes of scaly rust in there. 
but with the seized um, seized pins and stuff, I'm just gonna say we're gonna do you know patch rotors, calipers on the front. And we're gonna swap these speed sensors. Well, let's see how this works. Get on here and see if we can crack that one loose. I have no idea if it's gonna focus there for you or not. But you'll get the general idea of what we did over there, over here. Providing this one does the same thing over here as it did over there. Usually it's at that point you hear them go snap <laughs> and they break off. Oops, easy fella. Look at that, would you, would you look at that? Well, we've got a bunch of junk. There is a bunch of crud on there, but I do not see where this one has been rubbing. This one is rubbed free. Because the other one is rubbed on the axle side. Interesting, lots of rust build up there on the hole. I don't want to drop a bunch of junk down there. Proceeds to fiddle with it. What we'll do is we'll plug that hole off. We'll clean off all the rust and crap up here. Maybe we're just looking at an air gap issue, folks. Maybe at this point, I won't swap them side to side. Uh, I usually like to do one variable at a time if I'm trying uh, triagnostics. And then we'll go from triagnostics to swap tronics and uh, see what we do. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Executive decision's been made. We're gonna stick an ear plug in there. We're gonna clean all the rust off here because perhaps the way that that one's flexing over there and the amount of rust that's on this one, perhaps we're dealing just with an air gap issue. Um, so let's do that. Let's get the brake parts coming, plug the holes, clean this crap off, stick these back in. Uh, at that point, we'll have to let the lady take it because, well, we'll drive it just to see, but we'll probably have to let her take it and then report back in you know, a week or two if, if she still has issues. Well, believe it or not, Napa has all the parts in stock. Blows my mind. Napa is an acronym for never any parts available. Uh, let's see here. Let's get this all, get the dirty deed done while we're waiting for them. Well, it's hanging right here. Here's 12 mm. Remove the bolt of banjo. Right there. I'm have to give this a couple wiggles. Oh, we're missing the bucket, dude. And this will continue to drip. So you may want to close your eyes, look away if you're a little squeamish. We're gonna very lightly pinch the brake hose. Uh, other options are to stick a valve stem in there. That'll plug it up pretty well or push your brake pedal down and hold that down if you got that kind of time. Or if you wanna pull the fuse out of the brake lights. I'm not a big fan of doing that because a lot of times I walk away from a car when I'm working on it and I don't know when I'm gonna come back to it. So I don't like the brake lights on the whole time. I'm gonna take and uh, get the bolts here for our core so we can send that back when Napa shows up. Again, I don't know if that's gonna focus. I got the camera pretty dang close to it. We're gonna see if we can't clean up a little bit there. Get as much as we can with a whizzy wheel. Stick an earplug down in the hole. Oops. Whoa! Huh. Drove her deep. Didn't mean to do that. We'll get it back out though. The main objective is covered though. Well, 
lot of the outside rust. Inside, we have to go old school. Just can't chip away at it here. Well, I think we got it. Use the Venturi to give it a little, a second second. Pull that out. Let's go get some wheel bearing grease. There's some grease out of the grease gun to smear on that to keep that from getting so crusty. We'll slip that baby back in. Today's grease gun goober is Veldenine Full Synthetic. Not a sponsor, but that's what happened to be in the grease gun today. The grease gun, you don't use that too much anymore, let me tell you. So I'll stick that back in there. Get a little grease down the hole, doesn't matter at all. We're gonna take it, run this down. Got the torque spec on that, slightly tight. Let's wait for our parts. Here we go, folks. Got our rebuilt caliper from NASA. See if these are tight. Those are tight, so we'll have to knock them off. Okie dokie, this moment. Sounds like lunch is ready. Buzz these off. Anytime you're getting a used, or I mean rebuilt caliper, you've got to check everything. And typically, before I get too far, check everything. And by that, I mean like all your threads. Like, is, can you thread in the banjo bolt? Are the threads on the caliper bracket good? That's always good to know. Hate to get this thing all together, find out these look like they're all chowdered up. Um, of course, the banjo bolts in this one. So just, just some good advice for you if I could give you any. And always check to make sure that they actually lubed the pins and didn't just smear some lube all over the boots. That's always a good practice. That right, one's got the rubber on it. Looks like she's nice and greasy. So we'll leave those alone. The hardware that it comes with is usually really crappy hardware, this stuff. Plus it's not the right hardware for this. I mean, it's the right hardware in the sense that it, that it fits. Uh, don't get me wrong, but it's wrong in the sense that it's not the 100% correct stuff. The 100% correct stuff should have the little wings on the side, okay? You have to look on service data. Never take my word for anything. Uh, they go on the leading edge. So this is as the rotor spins, like pretend this is on the car. Rotor spinning this way in the forward direction, the leading edge, that's where this, this side goes because that's where the anti drag clips on the pads go. Like I say, you'll find all that in service data. So we're going to put a little grease behind our clips. These brackets are all powder coated. I don't know who does them for Napa now. I don't know if it's BBB or if it's Cardone or who it is. They switch often. Napa is continually switching suppliers, it seems. Which kind of sucks because then what they'll do is they'll go through and do a big reboxing. They'll take all their stuff out of boxes and put it in different boxes and then it's a freaking disaster getting parts for a while because everything is mixed up. Now, I'll give you a free tip on these little fellas. Down on this side that has the little pads, ears sticking out, make darn tootin' if yours are designed like this that you push this middle piece in. Okay? Trust me. Because what'll happen is it'll catch on this little guy. Okay? You 
just gotta trust me folks. I'm not saying this is gonna go smooth, but it's gonna go. And there, that one's not catching. They should move nice and free. Free and easy. Down the road I go. Let's see. That one moves free and easy. Bing, boom. Look at that, we got a staple in there. Where'd that come from? All right, this looks good. Got a piece of paper in there. We'll take that out. Easy, come on now. Oh, and the other thing you should check is make sure it's the right bracket. If there's any identifying marks on it, casting marks, anything like that. It's too late at this point, fella. He's already started putting it together. We're gonna grease that up. We're gonna dab some grease on our piston faces here. Hooray. Flip this little guy upside down, see if we can keep it from popping apart on us. We'll put our bolts in it. Ah, great, one of our pads popped out. See if we can get it back in without taking it back apart here real quick, like. Yes, sir. Whoa, whoa, almost spilt my water. Run these down, but not tightening them up quite just yet. We'll hang the bracket on the car. Get everything hooked up. We'll torque it all the factory specs, of course. Well, that's a long-winded one. Stick our copper washes on there. Oh, this guy's first day. Ready, tidy fella. And then, first I'm going to go eat lunch with the very lovely Mrs. O. Stand by. Whew. Lunch is over. Teeth are brushed. Rubber bands are reinstalled. The dentist finally got rid of my spacers and now I got these stupid rubber bands. These things here, I gotta carry these with me. A little sack of rubber bands. Go on my braces. They're a pain to put in when you got big meat nugget fingers. So, if you're ever in need, take your pocket screwdriver. You can notch a little hook in it. Grind her down, sterilize it with a cigarette lighter. And uh, that's it, you're good to go. That is a handy little tool for putting on your rubber bands and your braces. So you just stick that on a toolbox and someday we'll use it for something else. So, uh, where were we? These are on finger tight, I think. Yes, sir. Let's go stick this on the car. Guess we better stick our rotor on there first. Give her a little spritz of the film. Slide that little guy up on there. Grab us an axle and that will stick it on the stud just to take up space. And then we'll th thread a uh, wheel nut on. Just to hold the rotor. Right where we need it. Grab some liquid blue. Lock tight. We'll take our bolts. Oh, oh too much on that one. What's up, Mr. Dell? You missed me already? We just ate lunch together. Oh, I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't believe you. Okay, so I gave you a bit of a question. A question for me? Mm-hmm. Like a deep, intimate, personal one? Yeah. Okay. But can you hold that thought for a moment? Mm -hmm. Trying to do this one by feel. There we go. Got he. And then we'll get this top one. that one started and then while we're right here we'll do our banjo one washer on the inside one on the outside of course make sure the ceiling surface is nice and clean and that's gonna be an 11 mm maybe that right old girl both of them yes and the extension and the socket appreciate it Take and we'll run these in. Oh, 
Why am I using hand tools? I don't know. I was showing the people my tool I made <laughs> for my rubber band. Did they show them how they use it? No. <laughs> I show them my nasty old teeth. <laughs> I don't want to gross them all out. All right, there's that. We need to torque those down, but first let's torque down the banjo bolt. Wrong way, fella. So we'll torque this right to factory spec. That one's factory spec. And then we'll grab our 14, you know, this is holding still for us now. These are like 19.9 foot pounds, I think, if I remember correctly. That one's torqued. That one's torqued. And then the other one, what are you laughing at? What? Let's go ahead and test them. This one, I think, is 88 FTLBSs. There it is. That's not the noise you made. I don't know how to make this noise. But I could. Uh, and that's it, old son. We just gotta go get Mrs. O, who's conveniently out here right now, and uh, get her blood out. Not Mrs. O, with the car. <laughs> Ain't gonna bleed you out, Mr. So though, don't worry. That's good. We have that little screw wrapper there? Oh, never mind, I got it. Are you ready there, Mrs. Doe? I'm ready. Uh, go, well, go ahead and pump the brakes up for me, if you would. Because I've already gravity bled them out. Should be getting somewhat stiff. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Down. Shouldn't be much air in them here. Up. Down. Getting any air out of them. Down. Up. Down. There. We'll call that one good. Use your gla uh, gravity. Use your words, fella. Use your gravity bleeding. Uh, works pretty well. But let me uh, go hop on the other side here. Need to make sure our fluid's full. Check it before you start bleeding, obviously. These reservoirs are not very big. The rear brakes on this vehicle are also brand new, so we're gonna fill it to the max line. We're gonna take her for a rep. I got the wheel speed sensors pulled up there. Oh man, this lady's gonna send herself through the windshield now. <laughs> now that that's funny. So. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, fella. Let's go around and burnish in our brake pads. Lady's gonna love this. Those brake pedals. We're right at the tippy top now. It doesn't take much, folks. If you're if you got a spongy brake pedal, don't don't always just go you know slinging a master cylinder at it or anything like that. Fix all the brakes mechanically first. Seized pins, seized pads, you know any anything like that. It doesn't take much to really get a ton of pedal travel. You know besides you know air in the system, obviously. But. all four wheel speed sensors up on there. Now granted this still may have a an issue with that speed sensor you know getting hot going open circuited you know something like that. I'd, I'd have to revisit what the codes were but I only wanted to change one variable at a time which was uh, in this case obviously just cleaning all the, the rust out when they're intermittent like this it's very very difficult and i hate just shotgunning parts at it but strong possibility well look at that she just bet on us ha finally freaking saw it 
Hallelujah. That's the first time in a long time. That's wonderful. Look at that. That's all it takes is that one little glitch. I've looked at the connector on this thing. So I know it's not a, uh, a connector issue. The pin tension on it's good. I'm going to order me a sensor. Look at that. Well, at least we know it'll come out. And the good news is we don't have to uh, tear anything apart. Just that one bolt. Don't have to take the tire off, throw up on the lift. Now we got to wait for this lady. Okay. Oh, isn't that something? I'm glad that we were able to finally see that. We were together. Wow. What a moment. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, good news. We got to see the sensor finally go open and drop out. Doesn't have anything to do with having rust underneath the uh, speed sensor and, and changing the air gap, anything like that. We just essentially had a loss of signal. And the code that it's shown is a C0023, because now I can see it and I didn't have to look at the first video, which defines as open or shorted the battery left front ABS sensor. We know from previously looking at this vehicle a while ago that you know connectors, pin fitment, all that stuff looks good. So either we have the very rare circumstance of the ABS module itself crapping out or just a speed sensor that's going funky. If we wanted to be 100% definitive, we could swap them side to side like we originally thought, give it back to the lady, let her drive it for a while and see if it comes up with the right front code. Or what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm just gonna order one from Napper who has one in stock at Niagara Falls, DC and have them send it down to us in the morning. And I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna tell you have a nice day and see if that cures it because that's cheaper than doing anything else and sometimes you have to do that so call me what you want but don't call me late for dinner that's an old dad joke comment section folks questions comments concerns put me your best dad joke down there i like reading dad jokes and uh, just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching